Oh, my, may I go first? <laughs> Hello, I am Maria. Hi, I'm that's <laughs> This is a, a conference for a course we are doing on problem solving. So I'm talking with Ines. Ines, and you are in Canada, and you have you said you have two two small kids. Yes, they're uh, four and five. Awesome. So um, I'll ask you a tough questions about kids. What are your mathematical dreams for them? Oh, well, what I would like for them, I would like for them to uh, enjoy math and see math as something uh, creative and interesting and fun. Um, my uh, oldest child is starting kindergarten next year, and I know, and it, and it, right now he really loves math, and I'm worried that when he starts school, they're going to give him worksheets and drills, and he'll think that math is boring and monotonous. And so I want to get him to like math before he starts school and encounters school math. <laughs> Interesting. So you think of what you do as a sort of prevention. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I want to ask a bit more about this whole fun thing. Uh, what is fun? What is math fun? I think uh, uh, for me, uh, being uh, uh, following problems that I'm personally interested in and find you know, interesting and engaging and um you know, not just repeating the same procedure over and over again in a worksheet. So too much repetition is not fun? No, no. <laughs> okay. well, and the game where, you know, there's, there's some other objective other than just uh, solving the same problem, and that could be fun. It's interesting you talk about games, because games, all games, all play is somewhat repetitious, but it's fun repetition. So was, uh, yeah, maybe the competition or a sense of purpose, or something about it. So when you are taking one step after the next towards some purpose that you like, it's okay to repeat the steps. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what purposes are fun for your two kids, you think? Uh, what do they like? Oh, that's a good question, you think. Um, they like uh, kind of following their own ideas and coming up with their own ideas and building things and making things that, you know, that belong to them that are their own. This is a story I hear again and again. Two things, doing their own and making something. <laughs> so what are some of their own ideas? Ideas? Well, recently they've been, uh, well, my youngest daughter, she's still little, but uh, my son, he's been making uh, electronics with his father. So he's been making circuits with motors and parts that move, and he has ideas for... Uh, from, always, he always has ideas for making new ones, and he enjoys spending time doing that. Electronics? What sort of electronics? Uh, just simple motors and but with buttons and LEDs that turn on and do things. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, what are some other things? Uh, uh, do they both do it? You say the, the oldest? I uh, no, just the older one does that. How about the uh, younger one? The younger one is drawing and reading books and playing games. Hey, early reader. Uh, well, look, yeah, I read the book. She looks at the pictures. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so, so stories. A lot of stories, right? Pictures. Yes. Yes. Uh, and like, uh, yeah, and they tell stories too. <laughs> Do they make up their own stories? Uh, the, but my daughter does. The younger one. She likes making up stories. Okay. This is something again that can be very strong. So. Um, I want to invite you to think, how can they tell stories about problems? What do you think? How can you capture that? Uh, I, well, I mean, I'm, I'm a math teacher, so what comes to mind are word problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know a lot of the word problems that I give in class are, um, like, they're not all that engaging, and they don't really relate to real life. <laughs> Who made them up and why? I, I, I don't know. I, I give it to them because that's what's on their test and that's what they need to know how to solve. Okay. My question is, why would someone make up a word problem that's not engaging? That's not engaging. Uh, that's a good question and I don't know the answer to that. It boggles the mind, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Why would people do it? So, let's not do that. So maybe, um, I'm thinking, maybe you can invite your daughter to make up her own word one problems. Uh, yes. Yeah. So here we're doing something, we're making some things. Just tell, tell, tell her to tell stories. 
Maybe you can even record some. Oh, that was a great idea. Does she like uh, to be recorded or photographed? She, uh, she likes watching herself. She likes recording it and watching herself on. A lot of kids do. That's why I asked. <laughs> so, um, so your son uh, can take photographs of what he builds. Your daughter can record what she makes and tell stories. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. Those are all good ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to brainstorm together what they would do. To, uh, to make it their own, as you to say. To make it their own, yes, yeah. So it's it's theirs, right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. It's something that they come up with and uh, they've created. Okay. They... So uh, I think there are several people in the group already who are interested in making of different sort, in electronics, uh -huh. uh, Minecraft, uh, construction sets. So um, do mention that when, when, when there are... Uh, groups things to do when, when so, so that it's something that's of interest so you can come up with ideas for that and okay so yeah people can yes yeah, share ideas like so that i'm hoping to get out of this <laughs> uh, for my children and also for my classroom for your classroom so talk a bit about your classrooms what are your dreams for that oh uh, i i want to make my classroom more engaging and more interesting uh, I know a lot of my, my students have math anxiety, so I, uh, they failed math before. It's not, you know, sometimes they've taken the same class two, three times. And uh, so I, I want them to, you know, to like math and to see it as something that's not scary, but something that's interesting and maybe even relevant to their own lives. So uh, that's algebra or soul level, right? Uh, I I've taught, uh, well, I, I teach at a school, it's an adult school for people who don't have their high school diploma, so they come okay. to us and they take all the courses that lead to the high school diploma. So you work with adults who... Uh, yes, and uh, by adults, it's ages 16 uh, to 50. Young adults and older yeah. adults. <laughs> um, Mostly um, 16 to 25. Okay, so it's kids who still have hopes to... Yeah, they all are all there because they have uh, they have dreams for themselves. They want to get somewhere, and uh, this math class is is one of the steps that they need to do to get to where they want to go. So, uh, one of your main dreams, as I hear, is help them with their dreams. With, yes, with, yes, with yeah, their exactly. particular. You know, they have more grown up dreams than a four year old <laughs> would, maybe. Uh, so, so uh, this anxiety thing. What do you think? we can do to change that? Oh, I, yeah, something I've been thinking about. Um, I think maybe uh, connecting problems more to their own lives. Mm -hmm. um, so the anxiety comes from a disconnect, you think? Uh, yes, and maybe a lack of confidence also. Okay. Feeling in the past. So, so... Uh, what can we do? So let's say we have this person who had some past traumatic experiences, maybe, you know, have been tortured with math a bit. Yeah, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, and also the, uh, maybe a lack of fluency with mathematics, fluency. like lack of comfort with uh, fractions, with decimals, with percents, mm -hmm. with uh, numbers in general, mm -hmm. like not having an idea if we, when you multiply two numbers together, how big should the answer be, and things like that. So uh, fluency is somewhat long-term intervention because it takes a while to achieve that and also uh, I'm I'm talking about fluency because it's a short course we're gonna do so uh, at the same time some people get more confident without any fluency really and so yeah just the calculator to <laughs> yeah, they, they just say okay I'll use this tool or that tool or I will ask someone else for an answer. <laughs> I had a student who was like that. Well, no, uh -huh. no problem. I'll ask someone uh, else. Some, I'll ask a friend. I'll ask my mom. <laughs> so how uh, how can we get people to take this more relaxed stance in maybe a shorter term intervention? You know, in I a short course or kind of help them. I, I, uh, the nature of the problems, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're coming up with some great problems to give us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're coming up with starter problems. So uh, the hope is that people will change them in that many ways. So oh, okay. each person in several ways. 
Oh, so then that comes back to like making it your own. It comes it, yeah. a lot of comes back to that. Uh-huh. So I'd like for for you because you've been thinking about this and I've been thinking about this too, this anxiety thing. It's it's been so are, are you a teacher also? I I, I teach teachers. Okay. So like me. <laughs> I I um do things with teachers and I lead math clubs sometimes. So I work with uh-huh. kids and parents. So uh Kind of, uh, I do some of the things. I can relate to a lot of what you say about young adults, in particular, uh, having these issues. <laughs> so, yeah. so, 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 I, I'd like for you to think of that as you look at the problems. How can we invite people or change these problems so people feel better? Basically, that's one of one sort of adaptation, right? When yes, that's right. Problem, you can change it a little bit, a little bit to make it yeah more relevant to yourself. Or maybe we can do something to invite people to change it uh-huh. for themselves. And one of the changes just to make it about something they are interested in, like the current story they are telling. <laughs> <laughs> but also maybe some other changes you can think of. As a math teacher, uh, I'm sure you'll think of some. So just something. Because this topic is hugely important to a lot of people of all ages. Yeah, and I think that idea could work in class also, having students, you know, adapt questions to their own, huh. to themselves, maybe in groups. And, <laughs> I know. Wow. So you can give a problem to the class and invite groups to groups. change it. Yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> come up with an answer, present it. Oh, you, you made my lesson for today. <laughs> <laughs> it's it maybe an interesting thing to try. Because at least it's uh, something more relaxing, maybe. But also, yeah. also it's interesting for people if they don't get this one problem, maybe they will get someone else's version. Yeah, as I think there are cognitive skills involved in creating problems that aren't necessarily used in solving problems. I think it uses a different tool set also. So if they make a problem, it's a different tool skill set. Yeah. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> okay. Oh, so maybe you can um, invite your kids to try that to to remake the problems. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and and uh, are, are you teaching uh, the uh, the grown ups this summer? I did, uh, I might no. I end Friday, so I have three days left. Okay. <laughs> then off for the summer. Oh wow! <laughs> to celebrate. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, but uh, maybe. Uh, you can try it later. Try it yes, later. in the fall. I'm, I, this is the summer I'm hoping to come up with uh, some ideas to try when I go back in September. Wow, great. So I hope you share some of the thoughts, even though you won't be trying them right now. But if an idea comes, I, I'm sure there are about uh, maybe a third of people in this group who are teaching classes. Oh, who are other teachers? There are other teachers, uh-huh. and uh, you can look at the sign-up uh, at the sign-up p- uh, page, uh, which I'll, I'll send you later. Uh, so there are quite a few teachers of different. Oh, is that, so the the forum on the website is that mm-hmm. the place to interact? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So um, uh, people will be interacting much more. I just want to start uh, easy. The conversation. Right. Yeah. So people will be interacting with one another and, and talking, and there is a sizable group of teachers there. Um, okay. So there are people. Um, there are people who are researchers. There are people who are parents. Um, identify mostly as parents, uh-huh. and there are people who lead mass clubs or mass circles. Uh huh. And uh, there are people who teach classes uh, in institutions. Uh, so, and some people wear all of those hats. <laughs> <laughs> at different times like you are you identify as a parent as a teacher, teacher. And that's right you seem interested in research so I yes know, yes definitely from what you're talking about cognitive ideas so okay so um what are some other things i haven't asked about maybe some questions you have ideas uh- I do, um, well, what, what is the format going to be? So you, one week you give the problem, and then the next week uh, it's implemented? Is that okay. how it works? So here uh, you will have uh, three problems in a week. They will all come in one, basically, essay. Okay. Um, 
describing them, and then there will be links to PDF files where the, the problems are, with pictures and some illustrations. Now, these are drafts for the book we are making. So okay. they are not completely illustrated yet, and the book is being made in this course, <laughs> first draft. And then uh, there will be two things. One is share some thoughts of how you will adapt the problems to, well, your two kids. Okay. Uh, and brief thoughts, because we want, you know, we want this to be open. If you plan everything just so, it may not be open. So uh -huh. just a few ideas, basically, what you what okay. plan to do. Now, and then next week, we'll ask people to report on previous week's activities. Okay. So you'll have a week to implement what you plan to do, to see what other people's ideas were. Maybe you'll borrow somebody's ideas or <laughs> see uh -huh. what it is. And then you implement that uh, and to you you'll tell the stories of what happened all so, right uh, that sounds really exciting and it's just and it's just starting next week it's starting on july 1st uh when uh the first week of july because there are holidays in some countries uh, you know yes, here in canada <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, so U.S. and Canada has big holidays. So the first week is just the planning. Uh, so okay. people will plan for three problems, share the plans, and we uh, uh, then next week you implement those plans. Okay. So it starts slower. So uh, and next week you'll also plan the following three problems. Okay. And we'll also ask uh, the citizen science question. So, what do you see in everybody's stories? Uh -huh. So you can oh. you can go and we'll post a couple of questions like, uh, so what was the adaptation? What uh, what else can you do here? So things of that nature. So you kind of look at other people's ideas and your own <laughs> to analyze it a bit. So there will be basically three types of activities. Plan, uh, tell the story of what happened, and analyze the stories. Uh -huh. Yeah, it sounds great. Does it make sense? It does yes, perfect sense. <laughs> okay. It will all happen at the same place, at the place where you answered the four questions. So okay. So it'll be easier. Okay. <laughs> just one place and everything. And so it'll just get longer. <laughs> it will. It will be... A, b a few more activities, yes. Okay. It will, uh, well, there will be separate topics for okay. separate questions. Uh -huh. Okay. And um, uh, so, uh, seems seems reasonable? Yes, yes, very much. Yeah, and I'm excited about seeing uh, the questions that you've developed uh, for this. Okay. So, and if you get ideas for good questions, of course, it's the same place they go to. So uh -huh. I want everybody... <laughs> To make it their own, of course. Uh -huh. it, it's a very peer learning thing. And mm -hmm. if you have questions uh, about anything like formats or activities, you know where I live on Skype. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'll send you a message. Right. So anytime, we can talk anytime uh, and email and so on. Okay. So, so okay. So I'll, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing your. Uh, ideas. Y yes, I'm looking forward to coming up with some. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I'm going to stop the recording. All right.